Welcome to our service on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, as we think of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We light our fourth Advent candle. And so we pray. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We turn to Christ in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your Spirit the torn and the divided. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. The Collect, the special prayer for today. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son. Grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, beginning at the 25th verse. Now to God who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. <coughs> in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, 
to a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. <coughs> the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. <coughs> this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we think of Mary. Our Gospel reading told of the announcement to Mary that she would bear a son. Only Luke's Gospel has this account. It mirrors the account which Luke also records of the announcement by Gabriel to Zachariah that his wife Elizabeth would bear a son. Luke therefore links the announcement of the forthcoming birth of John the Baptist, of whom we heard last week, and Jesus. There is a story, entirely apocryphal, I should say, that one day in heaven Jesus approached Peter, who was acting in his role, if you like, of a missions officer. He was sitting at the pearly gates. Jesus asked about some of the people which Peter was admitting into heaven, noting how many of them were of, we might say, questionable reputation. Peter replied, I know, Lord, but what am I to do? They come to me here and I turn them away. So they go round to the back door. Talk to your mother, and she lets them in. To the medieval church, Mary was the approachable one. Her son, the coming judge of the living and the dead, more feared than revered in some people's minds. I hasten to add that this is, of course, an entirely incorrect view. Yet Mary was, and is, revered as the one full of grace, the one to whom anyone might go for help, 
pleading that she beseech her son on our behalf. She was holy because her son had been holy. And so it was said, might not her holiness have some benefit for us? This is to oversimplify, of course. But it is, in many ways, what caused the Reformation to marginalise Mary. In consequence, for many, the Gospel account of Mary is simply interpreted as a supreme example of faithfulness. However, it can be argued that this Gospel reading is less about Mary and more about God. The angel Gabriel spoke his final words to Mary, saying, nothing will be impossible with God. In terms of unlikely births, we can think of Isaac, of Samuel, both in the Old Testament, and of John the Baptist, of whom we heard last week. But the birth which Gabriel is announcing to Mary goes beyond the unlikely. How can this be? asks the incredulous Mary. <clears throat> we first heard about the Higgs boson, the so-called God particle, discovered in CERN in 2012. I have to say that despite the passing of eight years, I understand no more about it now than I did in 2012, which is precisely nothing. I read that it is incapable of being seen, and yet all life depends upon it. The Gospel story that we have heard today is about God, about the power of God. <coughs> it is a reminder that the God whom we worship is beyond any limitation that we might imagine. It is about a God upon whom we depend for life. It is about a God for whom, as Gabriel puts it, there is no such thing as an impossibility. For Luke, in his Gospel, it is the beginning of an impossible dream, as the song put it. For this child will grow. This child will heal the sick. This child will give the blind their sight, raise the dead to new life. And more than that, give that which we cannot see, but which we earnestly need forgiveness of sins, so that we too, like Mary, born in the image of God, might through the power of the Spirit bear in our lives and in our very being the image of the incarnate Son of God. I fear that in my case, God starts with poor material, but I am comfort, comforted by the belief, by those words that say that with God, all things are possible. And so rightly we may pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Who knows, when I reach the pearly gates, whenever that may be, the Mother of Jesus might even let me in at the back door. And so let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for grace to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Fill the Church with the power of the Holy Spirit announced to the Virgin Mary. May the faith of her response be granted to all followers of Jesus. May they be open to hear and to obey the calling of God. Draw the nations of the world into the kingdom of the Messiah, that those who hold authority may use it for the good of all. May the divine powers overshadow the places of strife and violence and bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the High Court of Parliament, for Her Majesty the Queen, and for all who hold office under her. We pray for our National Health Service, our doctors, nurses, health workers, our research scientists, all who seek to treat those suffering with coronavirus, all those who seek to bring an effective vaccine to all people. Have mercy on all people who are perplexed and troubled at this time. Give them assurance that God, to whom all things are possible, <coughs> give them assurance that God, to whom all things are possible, is very close to them. And we pray for the departed, for all whom we love but see no more, all who tried to follow the command of God in this world and have now come to fullness of life in him. We rejoice that they praise him with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and upon all for whom you pray 
this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.